today I'm going to be doing a mini tutorial and a speed cover design for my hardcover jacket wrap for What Lies Above. And I thought that it would be fun to do like a speed um, edit of me doing this so you guys can actually see the whole process and then also pause at some different points to give some tips so that if you guys are interested in making your own cover for your book then you can do that and to be honest this can be really confusing and I'm definitely not an expert in Photoshop and there's a lot of things about Photoshop that can be frustrating um, but once you learn how to use it it's pretty I wouldn't say simple but you start to understand it a lot better so I'm just going to show you some tips and tricks for how to make your own cover. So you can see here on the screen I have this template which is the Ingram Spark template. So in order to get your own template you're just going to go to Ingram Spark and I'll actually hop over and show you where you can download the template at. Okay, so you're just going to type in Ingram Spark template cover and then you're going to go to cover template generator and it's going to bring this up and you'll see up here you can also do publisher compensation calculator, print and shipping calculator, weight and spine width calculator and all kinds of other things. But then you're going to go to this one which is the cover template generator and what you'll have to do is just fill out all these fields. You have to have your ISBNs already so if you haven't purchased your ISBNs um, you can see that's mine for the hardcover edition. So I purchased my ISBNs through Bowker and then I'll leave a link down below to the to the place to Bowker where you can buy your ISBNs. So you need to buy your ISBNs and then you just put in the ISBN number. So for me, I put in the one for my hardcover and um, I'll make a different video about buying and claiming your ISBNs and all of that but you're just going to put in your ISBN number and then fill out all these other fields so for me I would do the trim size is 6 by 9 so I'll just go ahead and do this and then it's going to be black and white cream hardback jacket case laminate my page count is 366 for the hardcover and then I'm going to pick PDF because I'm using Photoshop, not InDesign. Then you put in your email, confirm what, and you, this is optional down here, but you can put in the price and whether or not you want the price in the barcode. I choose yes, because in traditional publishing, the price is in the barcode. So I want my book to follow as closely as possible to traditional publishing. So I select yes, and then you'll just hit submit. So obviously I've already done mine, so I'm not gonna hit submit. But whenever you hit submit, it will send the template to your email. So I'll go over to my email and show you what you will receive. I'm in my author email and this was sent to me. This is the email from Ingram Spark. And then whenever you scroll down, you'll see that there are two attachments to the email. So the first attachment says jacket.pdf and then the second attachment says case.pdf. So if you notice in the little image there, the jacket is going to be your full hardcover jacket that would go on the outside of a book and it's going to include the front and back, the spine, and the inside flaps, which is what you saw on my Photoshop screen and I'll go back over there in a second and um, go a little bit more in depth. But then the case is actually something that Ingram Spark do, started doing pretty recently and you can design the like you can design what goes underneath the jacket. So whenever you take a jacket off a hardcover book with traditional publishing or traditional published books, a lot of times they have like artwork underneath or an embossing or or it will just be a plain cover, but sometimes there's art underneath. And so you can actually do that now with Ingram Spark for your hardcover. You can design what goes underneath the jacket. You can either have just a solid color or you can have some kind of artwork. Uh, Ingram Spark does not let you emboss it but you can have some art printed there so whenever you take the jacket off it will have something really pretty and unique underneath. So you'll just download this to your computer and then what you're going to do, I'll go over to my files and show you how to open it in Photoshop. Okay so now I'm in my downloads folder and you'll see that we have the jacket and the case. So you would just right click on jacket, open with, and you're going to open it in Adobe Photoshop and then it will open a file that looks like this. So you'll notice that I do have the case file open as well and then I have my hardcover wrap and then I have my front cover which I did not do a speed edit 
of how I designed this because I didn't really think about it <laughs> since I designed this um, several months ago. So I don't have that, but there is actually a partial speed edit of me designing this in a vlog that I did. So I'll go ahead and link that up in the cards and down below in the description box. And in the description box, I'll put what minute the edit starts at so you don't have to watch the whole vlog if you want to see a little bit of how I designed this. But I will do a tutorial for how to design a front cover as well if I haven't already done one. If I've done one already, then I will link that of course as well because I don't know when this video will go up. But let's go back to the hardcover wrap. So here you go. This is what's going to open up in Photoshop depending on the dimensions that you put in for your book. So my book is a 6 by 9 hardcover so you can see. I'll zoom in for you. You can see down here, I have six by nine as the total dimensions. And then it gives you this template where it tells you exactly where each of the things begins and ends. So your front cover, for example, has the directions on here. And it tells you the pink area is the safe area. The blue area is your bleed. And then of course the white area is what won't be printed. Um, but you need to keep that. It does say don't delete the transparent background. So just keep this on there with all of your dimensions and everything. And whenever you export your PDF, it will have the whole file. So you want to keep all of your text and images and barcodes and important stuff in the pink. The blue though does still need to be covered, but you're going to want to cover it with your background. So this part is just the safe area in case anything gets cut off. So you want to have an image there, but it needs to be something that you don't mind being cut off. So that would be like your background color or your background photo. And I'll show you that with my background as well. So this will be the front cover. And then this with the barcode on the back will be the back cover. And you can see it already gave you a barcode with your ISBN. And then right here, you can see where it says 52199. That's my price. So it will start with a five and then it will have your price. So my hardcover is $21.99 as the listing price. So that is again... Um, very common with traditional publishing. If you don't put a price in there, it will just say 59999, I think, or 50000. Um, it won't have your price. So yes, front cover, back cover. This right here is the spine, and it has the dimensions down here, and then this will be the front inside flap. So this is where you're going to put the synopsis or book blurb, and then this is the back flap, and that is where you are going to put your author photo and your biography and any social media or anything which you will see at the end whenever I show you the full hard jacket wrap. So that's pretty much everything and then I'm going to start um, adding my photos in and designing it and all of that but I do want to show you really quick a little trick for figuring out where your bleed is once you put your photos in. So I'm going to um, import my background image really quick and then I'll show you a little trick for how to see your bleed even when you have a background. Okay, so I already had my photos imported over here on the side as layers, so I just unmask them. You can click the little eye. This isn't going to be a full Photoshop tutorial. I can do one of those if you would like. Just comment down below. It is imported, and of course, you would use your own background image. This is mine. You'll notice there's a line here because this is actually the same image twice, and one of them is just on top of the other, and you can rearrange the layers over here to decide what goes on top and what goes behind. Um, again, so masking and unmasking. There you can see there's an image and then I put another image on top of it. But it won't matter because you won't be able to see this once I import this line, once I import the front cover, it will cover it. So now I'm going to show you the little trick for how to see the bleed even if your background image is over it because you have to have your background image go to the very edge of the blue but now you aren't able to see where your bleed is and that's kind of a problem because you can't have any images or text go into the bleed so in order to put your book blurb or your biography or your author photo or anything that you don't want to be cut off you need to know where the bleed is so what you do is just select the, Im select the layer, the image Go over here to opacity and change the opacity and then you'll be able to see the background image but you'll also be able to see the blue bleed behind it. So if you just click out of it, now you can still kind of see this shadowy area which is the background but you can also see the blue bleed behind it and you can see this pink area which is the safe area. So now you're going to put your author photo and your biography, social media and all of that within this pinkish area, but your background, if you go back over here, select, put the opacity back at 100, you'll see that it does go to the very edge, 
but changing that opacity helps you to be able to know where to put your text and images. So you'll see me changing the opacity throughout this little um, speed edit. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on this hardcover jacket wrap and I'm going to import my front cover, which I've actually already done. It's over here. So I'm just going to unmask it and I put it right here in the dimensions. So if you zoom in down here, this is the spine, and if you look really close, you can see these little dotted lines. And so that's where you want your front cover. So your front cover goes from that dotted line to this dotted line right here. Then this is the little wrap area that wraps around the binding. And then this is the inside flap where I'll put the book blurb. So I went ahead and just imported my front cover that I had already designed, fit it into the right dimensions. And so now I'm gonna work on the flap the spine, the back cover, and the inside back flap where my author photo will go. So I'm going to go ahead and speed it up, and if there's any little tips that I want to share, I will slow it down and talk to you guys, but other than that, I'll just put a music overlay and get to work on designing the full wrap.
Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to export your PDF so that it is ready to be uploaded for printing. So there are some instructions here in the Ingram Spark file guide or creation guide, and it just tells you what um, properties to follow when saving your PDF. So we're back in Photoshop. You're just going to click File, Save As. I'm going to save it on my computer. You can save it to the cloud if you want. Then you just choose the Photoshop PDF format, title it whatever you want, and make sure all of those little check boxes follow the direction and hit save. And then I'm just going to hit OK. I really don't know what this means, but it's OK. I just hit OK. And then for Adobe PDF preset, you're going to click that box and then you're going to either click 2001 or 2002. I don't really know what the difference is. If anyone knows, leave a comment. But the creation guide says you can use either one. So I just picked 2002 and I'm going to hit save PDF. And then it's off screen, but it is going to load. And then I just opened it up when it was done. And there we go. The PDF is fully saved. And now it is ready to be uploaded to Ingram Spark because whenever you upload your hardcover, you are going to upload the entire hardcover wrap PDF. So we're done. a little trick is how to get your barcode on the top of your cover because if you remember on our original template which for me is layer one down here on the right um, I don't know if it's on screen for you guys or not but the very base layer of my wrap is layer one which is the template and that's where the barcode is contained at but once you put your background image on top of it it's going to cover up the barcode so I'm going to show you how to get the barcode on top so if you're a pro at Photoshop already then this will probably be just basic for you but if you don't know um, not everyone is an expert so if you don't know then I'm just gonna walk you through a few different ways that you can do it so one way that you can do it is you just go over to the right where all of your layers are you click on layer one which is the um, original template and you can just right click go up to duplicate layer and then you're going to title it as whatever you want and you'll hit OK so I'm actually gonna do this for you and I'll just undo it so it doesn't mess up my file but let's duplicate it so now I have a layer one and a layer one copy so what this is going to do, I'm going to actually drag the layer one copy up to the very top of my layers over here. You can tell I have a lot of layers. <laughs> so I'm just going to drag it up to the top because that will put it on top of everything. Um, and so that way that you can see it. So one way to do this is after you're completely done with your design, you can just have an open space down here for your barcode and then what you'll do is you drag that copy up to the very first place place it on top of everything and then as you can see the barcode is in the exact same place as underneath so then what you would do is again there's a few ways you can do this so I'm gonna go over here to the eraser I'm going to set the pixelation to be very large even larger than that very large and what you can do is just delete the big sections around the barcode to go ahead and get that out of the way. This is one way. There is a simpler way that I'll show you in a second, but you know, you might prefer this way. So you can just delete everything that's kind of around that barcode and then click out of it and zoom in. And then you can go in and you can touch up the areas and erase closer to the barcode. But I actually don't like doing it this way because you would have to basically zoom in down to the pixelation and you would have to erase the individual pixels in order to get a straight edge on your barcode. And that is crazy. So even though that is one way technically you can do it, that's not the way that I recommend. So the second way I'm going to undo this so that we can get back to our original template. So another way that you can do it is you can open this template in another um, Photoshop file and it will open up another little tab. So you can see I have multiple tabs up here. That's my hardcover case wrap. 
Um, if you are subscribed to my newsletter, then you have seen that. And if not, then I guess that's a reveal for you. But this is what the case wrap looks like. So that's what goes under the dust jacket. So you can see I have multiple tabs open up here. Multiple files are open in Photoshop. So you can just go back to your files and open the template again in Photoshop. So we'll open it in a new tab. And then what you can do is you can crop this barcode because you actually cannot crop in Photoshop. Um, it will crop your entire canvas. So if you were to crop this, if you were to try to crop this barcode right now, it would crop your entire canvas and it would get rid of everything else on here except for the barcode. So I don't want to do that, obviously. So you can open it in a new file, crop the barcode, and then you can either save it as a PNG and import it onto here, so it will just be the barcode, or you can drag and drop it. And if you don't know how to do that, basically what you would do is you go over to layers, you just pick it up, you can see I've dragged it, and then you go up to a new file, hover over it, and then you would just drop it in and it will transfer. So I would just put it back over here and it will put it back. See, and it gives me that error message because it's back in the same source file, which is okay. Um, but if you are, let's say, dragging something from, like let's say that I wanted to drag the flame. So I'd pick it up, hover, bring it down, drag and drop, just hit yes, and it brought it over. So then I'll delete because I don't want that on there. So that's one way that you can do it is to open it in a new file, crop it, and then either save and import or just drag and drop. That's one way that you can do it. Or you could also do something similar to what we do with the eraser, but it's a lot simpler and a lot cleaner. So you would just take your eraser. I like to erase all the big sections because it is easier to work with if you get rid of all this stuff out here. So I've just erased a lot of the pink until we're like right close so we have a good space to work with. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing and I'm going to get out of the eraser. And then what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you have the correct layer clicked over here or else it's not going to work. Oops. So you would just click on this layer and then I'm going to go up here to the rectangular marquee tool, click on that and we're just going to highlight the area that we want to delete, hit delete, and it will delete all of those pixels with a nice straight line. Okay, so you can see this is kind of bleeding through, which actually makes it really difficult to see what is going on. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let me find where my barcode is because it's kind of making it difficult to see. So give me one second, I'm going to scroll through the layers and find my barcode so that I can mask it for a moment so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so I masked my barcode so you can see I just removed it for a moment. And so we're going to take that rectangular marquee tool, highlight again, delete, and highlight again, and we'll get closer and make it perfect in a second. Okay, so we're just going to scroll in, and this is where you can see exactly where, so you'll just go down and go right up against the white to make sure that there's no pink left over. So I'm just dragging it down. Right, and once you get into the black, you want to line it up perfectly, hit delete, and now you can see that you have a perfect, here let me get out of the deselect, go up to select, hit deselect, and then you can see that it is perfectly cut on the left hand side. So then you would just go around and do the same thing on all sides, and now you have a layer that is just the barcode, and you can even go and title it barcode, and then you would be able to then you would be able to drag it around and let's say that you wanted your barcode on the right instead of in the center then you could put it over here on the right and put a picture or your cover design information like who your designer is or since you're doing it it would be you um, I put my cover design information on the inside back flap underneath my social media 
but you can put it on the back or whatever you want back there. So then you're able to move this around. So I'm going to delete this since I do not need that. And then I'm going to go down here and find my layer, which I'm actually going to rename barcode just so it's easier for me to find next time. And so you can see I've done that and my barcode is in place. So that's just a little trick for how you can get your barcode on top of your design. All right, guys, that is all for today. I hope that this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. I will be doing a front cover design tutorial slash Photoshop tutorial, and I'll be getting more into how to actually use Photoshop to design a cover. And then I also have a formatting video coming out very soon on how to format both print editions, hardcover and paperback, and an ebook edition of your novel if you want to do the formatting yourself. I do all of my own formatting and designing. It helps to cut down on costs and also I just personally like having creative control and I love doing design stuff so um, for me I wanted to do it. If you don't feel comfortable or confident with this you can always hire someone but I think that it's totally doable to design your cover so I hope that this was helpful and again if you have any questions leave them down below in the comments or if you have requests for future videos leave those down below as well. Make sure you like and subscribe and don't miss any future videos and as always thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye!